It's Chris Phelan, and I'm filling in tonight for Rita Cleary, and I'd like to welcome everyone to her show, and I'll be also on the air with you after we, we complete Real Life Adventures with our regular tune into to Hunterdon from 6 to 7 o'clock, so I do want to welcome everyone on board. Uh, I'd like to welcome Frank Peluso, who is our guest here tonight. Good evening, Frank. How are you? Fine. How are you, Chris? Really is a pleasure to have you uh, on board here. Frank is a... Uh, a uh, resident uh, of our area, of our listening area. He also has a business here in Hunterdon County, and uh, do want to uh, again thank you for taking time to come down and join us here in the studios tonight. My pleasure. Do appreciate it. Uh, let's talk a little bit about you, Frank. I mean, that's what Real Life Adventures is about. Uh, you know, it's talking about uh, the individuals that uh, you know are part of our our community here in our listening area. Uh, I do want to congratulate you because you have reached a, a real milestone that uh, many entrepreneurs and small businesses uh, can only dream of. You have celebrated this past January 40 years uh, in business, so I really do want to congratulate you on that uh, uh, incredible accomplishment, and uh, you know you are an inspiration. We're going to hear a little bit about that story tonight, but uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, anyone that has seen you know Frank's work, uh, you know can can truly say that uh, you have a pure talent, and, and not only a talent, you know, I think in terms of your photography, but also obviously in terms of your, you know, your, your business. Uh, but let's share a little bit about yourself and, uh, you know, who you are, Frank, and, uh, you know, a little bit about your story, uh, and then we'll get into the business stuff, but I, and I do want to kind of talk about photography, because uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, have photography as a hobby. Not everyone has uh, made a living after 40 years doing that. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is one of those businesses where there are more um, more amateurs than there right. are professionals in the field. Like you don't see too many amateur dentists. Or sure, <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> that's that's true. Not too yeah. many amateur uh, heart surgeons out there. <laughs> exactly. And, uh... So that's what that's what drives the business. More the professional end is only like maybe five or ten percent of the market. And so it's uh... that's interesting. Only five or ten percent are yeah. actually you know professional photographers. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I guess that's the whole range of oh, yeah. professional photography. And so all of the companies, the equipment companies, basically they cater to the um, other 90 percent, the sure. amateur market. And okay. One of the few professions where we're kind of forced to work with amateur-driven equipment. Yeah, that's got to be a, you know, a challenge, I would it think. Is. It is. I mean, there certainly is professional equipment, too, but, uh, but that's a big part of the, uh, of the business. And, um, so. Now, 40 that's years ago, uh, you know, photography equipment was, was very different. Oh, photography has changed tremendously. It has changed more in the past 10 years than really? it did in the previous 100. With, with the age of technology yeah. and computerization and uh, yeah, I, microchips I, and all that I, stuff. I, not that I'm an expert <laughs> <laughs> at all. <laughs> I teach at Middlesex County College. I teach digital photography. And one of the things I do is, in the first class, I bring in a glass negative. This okay. is before even film, right. when emulsions were coated on glass. And I have, hold it up and I say to them, this is a 120-year-old image on a piece of glass before film was invented. Wow. I can still go in the dark room and make a prints of this. Wow. But there's digital uh, technologies from the 80s that there is no way to retrieve the data from really? uh, yeah. wow. so the, the 80s and 90s. The old uh, true way of doing yeah. things has, has it's real merit. It's still around. It's still around. Well, I'm going to ask you a question that probably others have asked you in the past. Uh, you know, when you were little, did you take pictures? Did you uh, always want to be oh, a yes. photographer? I knew from the time I was probably like five or six wow. years old that I wanted to be a photographer. And okay. I just, it fascinated me. Okay. And um, when my... Um, cousin came home from Korea, he bought a 35mm camera over there, and this is when 35mm photography was just starting to become popular. So what was the photography? We do have some young listeners, like uh, myself and you, <laughs> that we have some young listeners. What was before 35? Like when you were five, what were oh. you taking taking pictures with? Well, then we had box cameras, but with, they had, they used large roll film. Okay. You know, very, there were formats like uh, 616 and 116 that hmm. shot 4x5 negatives on roll film. Roll there was and is it black and white, I guess, only? That was the yeah, only? it was, well, the color was invented, but amateurs did not use black and white. Uh, the color was color. way, way too expensive. Okay. And um, this was on, these were the old Bellows cameras. I don't know if you've ever seen them. You always see them, like, um, on antique store shelves and things like that. Oh, with the, the, with the Bellows. With the Bellows, and yeah. it, would, it would retract and, uh -huh. and, and open. And, like and a that was the kind of cameras that we oh. used. That and box cameras, because I was, when I was a kid. Sure. And then when I started doing it professionally, um, which was at the age of 16, I started working for a newspaper. Um, I started out with a 4x5 uh, graphic press camera. That's, you know, the classic thing with the flash bulbs and the big reflector okay. and all that, and sheet film, where okay. you put in individual sheets of film for each picture. And um, 
So that's why I said I've come. I've come from, and that technology hadn't changed really in the past 50 years before the prior to that. Wow. So I was still using the same equipment basically that was being used around 1900, 1910, hmm. and uh, then things started changing very rapidly in the uh, in the 60s to so, uh, to roll film like uh, what they call two and a quarter twin lens reflex cameras, and then 35 millimeter took over from there to a large extent, except in the professional market, we and I still use 4 by 5 sheet film cameras, what they call a view camera, okay. to do uh, certain things once in a while, but the market now is, I would say, 95% of everything I do is digital.